Hi, 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 Sweaty Jen back again. Today's video is just going to be about some TV shows that I've watched recently. I figured maybe some of you would be interested in seeing some of the stuff I've been watching and my thoughts. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a show called Survivor Man. And this show stars a man named Les Stroud. And basically, he goes out to all these different places in the world, like wilderness places, and he gets stranded there for one week with no equipment, no supplies, except for his, like, camera. And I think he, like, allows himself to bring, like, a few survival things each time. But for some reason, this show survivor man really validates my hyperhidrosis and the reason being is because he talks so much about how much harder it is to live out in the wild when you're wet and for some reason whenever he talks about you know i could freeze to death so much faster if i was wet or nothing feels worse than walking around in wet socks you gotta dry those off immediately it gives me this little thing inside of like it's a moment when somebody who doesn't have hyperhidrosis is feeling like somebody who has hyperhidrosis feels all the time and so it, it's definitely validating and it's also entertaining it was this show is the first like survivor type show that i've actually been interested in and les stroud is just like he has such a genuine seeming personality it's very entertaining so uh he also talks about like how being wet can increase the risk for hypothermia and different funguses and stuff like that and so in addition to some of the things he says validating my feelings of some like having hyperhidrosis he also has kind of made me appreciate just like life in general more all of these luxuries we have not living in the wild are things we take for granted i guess and one thing that actually came from this show i'm like a bit of a germaphobe i don't like sharing drinks with people i always wash my hands before i eat i don't like germs and i try to prevent myself getting sick to probably an excessive amount but basically like Les is out there on Survivor Man and he'll be in all these places he has no hand sanitizer he has no soap and he's just like peeling apart these like different foods and eating them without washing his hands and stuff and the other day this is gonna sound really insignificant but to me it was a big deal I ate an orange and peeled an orange without washing my hands and I don't know the last time that I've eaten something without washing my hands first or at least like making sure like anytime I do something that I think gets germs on my hands like touching money or touching shared handles on doors I always wash my hands but for some reason, I ate an orange without washing my hands. The world didn't end. And so it kind of helped me fight my own inner struggle, just being inspired by watching him. And I really appreciated the taste of the orange as well. I felt like, I don't know, I was surviving eating this orange and the flavors were just so strong. And I don't know, it was just a weird experience. A little, little pleasures in life were noticed more because of watching somebody have to survive somewhere for a week by themselves. The next show is similar to Survivor Man, but it adds a competitive element to it. So basically they start with 10 people at the beginning and the first season is the only one I've watched of alone, but I'm planning to watch the others one day. But essentially, there's these 10 men, and they were brought out to Vancouver Island in British Columbia, up in Canada. So they're dropped off in, like, all these little different parts of the island, and then whoever is able to survive out there, I think they got to choose, like, 10 survival items. They get bear spray, some other, like, emergency protection equipment, um, and that's it 
that's it and then they're dropped off and they have to survive and whoever survives the longest wins and i think it was like five hundred thousand dollars this show was kind of interesting too because it's similar to survivor man in the regards that like each of these competitors has their camera and their equipment and that's it and they're alone but also it adds that little competitive twist that keeps you watching and rooting for certain people and at the end it was pretty cool to see who won. It was not an expected person at the beginning. Like I was like, oh, this show's totally rigged. This guy's gonna win for sure. But he, he an unexpected person won. And so it was pretty cool. On Vancouver Island, it rains a lot there. It's like constantly wet. Well, from what I saw on the show. And it was like another validation of like hearing all these people complaining about being wet and how horrible it is uh being wet and cold and it just makes me feel like they almost understand how it feels to have hyperhidrosis sometimes in both of the shows survivor man and more so even alone they they provide like little tidbits of information down at the bottom of the screen sometimes and alone has taught me a good bit about nutrition stuff that I didn't even know like on these nutrition facts are not well known or anything and so it's cool to learn more stuff about something I'm interested in as well for example one field mouse is 35 calories which is the same as one um pizza pocket or what do they call it? pizza roll and so that's cool it's cool I like it and then the next show I want to talk about is called The Circle. And this show is on Netflix. Alone is on Amazon Prime. And Survivor Man, I believe, is on Amazon Prime too. But The Circle is on Netflix. And so there's 13 contestants. And they can't communicate with one another except through text messages through this like voice recognition called the circle and basically they're trying to become the most popular influencer of the bunch like the most well-liked influencer they want to win the main prize which I think was a hundred thousand dollars for this one and some of them were catfish they would put a different picture like one person was catfishing as the opposite gender and so it was just kind of cool it's like watching a little social experiment because these people are also isolated the only communication they're having is with each other like the other contestants and it's all through text message and then also it's interesting to see kind of like their psychology change more as time passes it, it's just cool like i love the show catfish too on mtv the circle is kind of like alone meeting catfish coming together in a way and it was a fun show to watch i couldn't stop at first i was thinking the show was a bit cheesy and maybe not gonna be so fun but then i got kind of hooked into it and then the last is the tv show you which was recommended to me not only by the client i mentioned in my previous story video but also it was recommended by a lot of my friends because they know i'm like into true crime thriller tv series so i watched you and it follows a young guy named joe goldberg and a lot of people compare this show to Dexter. I personally think they're way different. Like, I see why they get compared. But the story and everything, like the acting, film style, everything's way different from Dexter. But I can see why it's compared. And in fact, they did like a little Dexter shout out in you at one point. So that was cool. But the show you is awesome because you get to kind of like live in the mind of this young guy who is not the most mentally well person that you'll ever meet and then there's a bit of a cheesy factor to it they'll make fun of millennials in a way at times and it's a bit cheesy and i know some critics were saying like the acting wasn't good but you can tell the cheesiness and like the 
kind of jabs at millennials are there on purpose and they provide a bit of like humor from a weird storyline but it overall it was a really good show i'm looking forward to seeing the next season that comes out those are the four shows that i could really think of that i felt compelled to talk about i'm watching another show at the moment called love and i think it's like love slash hate it's about gang life in Dublin in Ireland, I believe. It's not as like attention grabbing as the four that I just talked about, but I'm going to keep watching it and I'll give you my thoughts when I finish it. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day. And if you liked this video, please subscribe, leave a comment, like, do whatever. Let me know that you were here and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.